Life for the indigenous peoples of this land pre-colonization was cyclic, structured and very harmonious. Yeah, and a lot of these structures were derived from the observations of the natural cycles of the world. Um, so the moon cycle, the phase of the moon, for example, is a great way of keeping time. Yeah, so this timekeeping also allowed for people to keep the structure in their life, uh, with each member of the community being responsible for uh, a different action, so a different part of taking care of the community or country. Yeah, and that sort of, um, those roles, they involve different um, ways of caring for country. So a good example of that might be a cool burn, um, where you would look at the specific behaviour of the trees or the animals or, or certain accumulation of debris and know that when you've seen those signs, you were able to perform things like a cool burn to prevent those really hot bushfires like we're seeing in the summer of 2019. Yeah, so those natural cycles that are being observed, they allow the Indigenous peoples to be able to read the land and know when to conduct these activities, uh, really focused on maintaining the health of that land and that country. Now, the focus of living harmoniously with the land has resulted in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples being known worldwide as custodians. Uh, across the uh, Australian continent, there are many um, sort of sites of significance to, to Indigenous Australians which sort of showed perhaps some of these uh, systems in, in sort of practice. Can you tell us about some of those? Yeah, absolutely, P. You're absolutely correct. There are many sites across Australia that really speak to how Indigenous peoples lived with and off this land. Now, this image here is a drawing produced in the early 1800s. This was done by a French illustrator who came here during that time, and they were really interested in what life looked like for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Now, here we have an image of an Aboriginal house. Uh, they're sometimes called gunyas. And other, you know, aside from this one um, piece of evidence, there are numerous archaeology archaeology sites across Australia uh, that really show us um, the different housing styles, the different villages, um, the different ways in which Aboriginal people lived on this land. So a great example of this Carly, is the Budjbim cultural landscape down on Gunjamara country in, in southern Victoria. Can you tell us a bit about that one? Yeah, this is one of my favourite uh, sites to talk about and learn about. Uh, now this landscape is based on a dormant volcano grounds and this has really provided the Gunjamara people the perfect conditions for farming and land manipulation. So here we see a really beautiful example of this and how the Gundijamara people were able to use these lava flows uh, to develop a really complex system of dams and weirs and channels in order to farm the Kuyang, uh, otherwise known as the short-finned eel. Yeah, cool. So this landscape that we have here is then the world's oldest um, sort of and most extensive aquaculture system. And the dating techniques used on this have actually shown that it's 32,000 years old. Um, and it was actually recognised by the World Heritage List in 2018. Yeah, um, so it's quite a phenomenal site. 32,000 years old. That's quite old. Uh, but when we look at other sites across Australia, uh, there have been dating uh, that has told us that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been here for at least 65,000 years. 